Disney and Pixar's 2015 film, Inside Out, was such an amazing film with great characters, emotional depth, and everything in between. And I just saw its brand new sequel, Inside Out 2, now playing in theaters. But is this new film anywhere as good as its predecessor as it makes room for new emotions? Or is this one going to give Disney and Pixar another big disappointment that would cause them to have an emotional breakdown? Find out on this spoiler-free review right now. Bad days, entertainment rankings and reviews. So greetings, my fellow YouTubers, and welcome to Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. My name is Dual, bearing known to as the Big D, and this time around, I bring to you a spoiler-free review of the just now released coming of age anime feature flick Inside Out 2, released by Disney and produced and created at Pixar. This, of course, is the sequel to Inside Out. Well, and it's been released well nine years after its pre after this was released. Directed by Kelsey Mann in his feature directorial debut, produced by Mark Nielsen from a screenplay written by Meg Lefebvre and Dave Holstein, and a story conceived by Mann Lefebvre. Now, this has returning voice cast, including Amy Poehler, Phyllis Smith, Louis Black, Diane Lane, and Kyle McLaughlin from the first film. Unfortunately, Bill Hader, Mindy Cowling, and Kaylin Diaz are no longer available to play their um, character reprise their roles, as we have Tony Hale, Liza LaPira, and Kensington Talman. Playing the roles of Fear, Disgust, and Riley. Plus, some new additions including Maya Hawk, Ayo Ediberry, Adele Exarchopoulos, and Paul Walter Hauser. And this time around, this film tells the story of Riley's emotions as they find themselves joined by new emotions that want to take over Riley's head. Now, I must say, this was really, really something from what I've seen. Now, this was set a year after the first film. And, of course, I forgot to mention that the first film has a short subject called Riley's First Date, which I thought was pretty good, which took place after the events of the first film. But anyway, this is set one year after the first film. Riley's just turned 13 and is about to enter high school. Her emotions, which were joy, sadness, fear, anger, and disgust, have since created a new section in Riley's mind called Her Sense of Self, which houses memories and feelings that take up Riley's core personality. Riley goes to hockey camp so that she can apply for a team at her designated high school, the Firehawks. Once to make a good impression, the emotions use a mechanism Joy has created to launch any negative memories to the back of Riley's mind. On the night before she leaves, the emotion console sounds off a puberty alarm. After the emotions get rid of the alarm, a group of mind workers barge into headquarters and upgrade the console, making a mess of the place in the process. Before leaving, they warn the emotions that others are coming. As Riley gains four new emotions, envy, ennui, embarrassment, and their leader, anxiety, who goes crazy to fix it. Riley up. Now I won't tell you any more of this story though, so I'm gonna I'm gonna keep this real close to spoiler free as I'm going to, okay? If you really want to know what happens once they arrive, well just go see the movie, alright? So now I'm gonna give you my thoughts on the film. I must say, I will say I enjoy it almost as much as the first film because well, the first film was still perfect in my view. This does kind of come close, but just misses it by that much. But at least I could consider this to be a good Pixar sequel. A very good one. Anyway. Now, currently, the reviews are as good as the first film. The film sets at 92%, which is 6% lower than its predecessor on Rotten Tomatoes. Where it says, spicing things up with the wrinkle of teen angst, the film clears the head and warms the heart by living up to its predecessor's emotional intelligence. I agree on that. 
Man Crick has a score of 74, and Sigma score has an 8. Just like the first one. The, the Seattle Times commended the voice cast and the film as a happy head trip for any age. The Daily Telegraph praised the animation metaphors and wit while saying the cast iron ontological brilliance of Doctor's original premise bears expansion well. Yes, they're talking about Pete, and of course, um, the reviewers talking about Pete the Doctor. And Variety praised the performance Maya Hawk gave for as for anxiety and the film's emotional impact, calling it the most poignantly perceptive tale of the conundrums of early adolescence since eighth grade, which I've seen that before, never reviewed it though. But anyway, yes, I agree with them and what have you, but I found this film to be very, very good. Andrea Datsman does the score for the film, and she does an exceptionally good job. So anyway, I really think this had even more emotional depth and feel to it and what have you. And love heart as well. So I think this would rank up there with the later, well, with other Pixar sequels, most notably the Toy Story sequels, because this had just as much emotional depth and heart as those films had. But you have to take my word for it. You be the judge. But I really like the story and what have you. So I must admit, they did exceptionally very, very good. Now, for our cast, Amy Poehler's back as Joy. I'm saying she's just as good as before. Louis Black reprises his role as Anger. He does good as well. Same with Phyllis Smith as Sadness. Really good. And Diane Lane and Kyle McLaughlin return as the voices of Riley's parents. Very good, the performances. Now, for our new cast... Now, Tony Hale does as good a job as Bill Hader did in the first film as a voice of fear. Now, of course, um, of course, you might remember Hale from Arrested Development and Veep, you know, the HBO series. Yeah. Now, Liza LaPera voices Disgust, and just like Mindy Colling did in the first film, she does an exceptionally good job in, as this voice as well. She currently stars on the new Equalizer series with Queen Latifah. She recently appeared in various shows, including <coughs> excuse me, appeared on Dollhouse and Don't Trust the Bee in Apartment 23. So I've got to say she does a good job. Voicing Envy is Ayo Edaberry. Yeah, Ayo Edaberry. Of course, she stars on the award winning series The Bear, as seen on FX and Who. Voicing Anui, which um, is, I mean, for board, is Adele Exarchopoulos. Who has appeared in? I don't know. Well, she's been in several films. She actually recently did the French dub for Ember in Pixar's recent hit Elemental. So that's a that's pretty cool. Voicing embarrassment, which. We actually don't get to hear from until the last bit is Paul Walter Hauser, who had supporting roles in I, Tanya, Black Klansman, The Five Bloods, and Cruella. He also recently has breakout performance as a titular character in Clint Eastwood's Richard Jewell a few years back. So, he's pretty good. But I've got to say, I like the performance we got from Kensington Tallman taking over Kaylin Diaz's role as Riley. I'm saying she did exceptionally good. Now, other characters we do see include Lily Marr as Valentina Valortiz as, as a hockey player at Riley's 
high school. So she's pretty good. Riley's friends are Bree and Grace, and they were voiced by Samaya Nuridin Green, that's Bree, and Grace Lou voiced Grace. So they were pretty good. If Nicole Brown plays voices the coach of the series. Now we also have Ron Funches voicing well a a really silly character as a matter of fact, named Bloopy, which was kind of a parody well, cross parody between Blue from Blue's Clues and Nora the Explorer. Now of course, um this guy recently voiced Co Cooper in DreamWorks Trolls franchise. He's also appeared in several other films. He recently lent his voice to the former Disney Plus film, The One and Only Ivan. He also appeared in Disney Plus's another former Disney Plus film, The Cheaper by a Dozen remake, which was terrible. And he also appeared in films like Get Hard and Killing Castle. Yeah, and he has a character called Pouchy as well, which that's like Backpack. <laughs> anyway, and we have lots of others you'll get to hear in Queen Pete Doctor, Paula Poundstone, just like before, same with John Ratzenberger, and even Flea of the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Yes, I am going to say Inside Out 2, it's probably a, it, it's probably may not quite come close to as good as the first one, but I still liked it, though. I think it was a perfect sequel. Uh, like I said, it just misses by that much. But I still think this had a great feel to it, and even with a little bit of thrills and what have you, uh, with what happens to the main emotions. But I'm not going to tell you about that. Again, you're just going to have to see the movie. Because as I've said already, I'm keeping this review close to, spo to more spoiler-free than I want it to be, alright? So, I would recommend you go see Inside Out 2. You won't be disappointed. You, If you like the first film, you're going to love this film almost as much. Just like I did. So, for my score, I'm going to give Inside Out 2 5 stars. Which, of course, means on a scale of 1 to 10, I give it a 10. It was great. The cast was great. The characters are good, old and new, and the same for old and new cast, too. The score's good, the story is good, everything's good. So, what did you think of Inside Out 2? Let me know in the comment section below, please. If you like this video, click the like button, subscribe, and be a part of the Big D Nation. Continue to help support my channel, make it grow, and make the views grow. Join me next time when I bring to you a TV log of... The, the animated series, Wait Till Your Father Gets Home. I'm looking forward to doing that, finally. So, so if, and I forgot to mention to click on the card early on. I'm sorry about that. For, if you haven't seen my review of the first film. But anyway, if you, but if you like this, you can check out my reviews of some of these other films. Uh, some of these Disney Pixar sequels that really had an emotional feel to it. In the upper left-hand corner is my my re-review of Toy Story 2 from 1999. The upper right-hand corner is my re-review of Toy Story 4 from 2019, which, you, well, I'm sorry if I'm not including 3 but uh, in these um, recommendations, but you'll see it. I'm pretty sure you've seen the, uh, the cards during the video. Or if you'd like, go to the bottom left-hand corner and see my spoiler-free review of Disney and Pixar's recent hit from last year, Elemental. And the bottom right hand corner is the button you can click to subscribe. If you like rankings and reviews on movies, TV, music, video games, etc., then I'm your guy. Thank you for watching. Until next time, I'm the Big D saying, see ya.